In every corner of our clock-bound lives, the five-day work week quietly governs our rhythm. Even those not bound to the corporate world with jobs in non-traditional industries still seem to find themselves tied to this five-day weekly cycle. Yet behind this seemingly mundane schedule lies a rich tapestry of history and naturally, a torrent of debates that spans centuries. And it is a history that is still playing out to this day with the five-day work week back on the floor for debate. So let's get some context. Let's journey back to the time where the sun, not the clock, dominated labor. There was no waiting for the weekend or TGIF. No, it was simply do what it takes to survive. Back in the day, working wasn't work. It was one and the same with being alive. Agrarian societies followed the natural light, sowing and reaping without a steadfast schedule and certainly without a time card to clock out on, since their work was entwined with the seasons and environmental element cycles. Their version of working was not based on the orders of a boss, but at the whim of the elements in their geographical climate. Of course, as we advanced as a civilization and societies with full-blown economies took shape, jobs that went beyond the basic survival needs took form. Individuals started specializing in certain professions and industries, and multi-level hierarchies became more visible. Still, there wasn't any standard for when to work or not beyond what organized religions deemed as holy days to abstain from working. Individual contributions to one's own community, family, or personal survival remained the dominating driver behind performing any work, but then came the Industrial Revolution a tidal wave of mechanisms and the implementation of strict schedules. As technology advanced, the way which capitalism plays out was multiplied. With the boom of industrialism and manufacturing, production for just one sphere of influence quickly became production for the masses. The factory bell rang, dictating workers' lives, often summoning them for grueling 10 to 16 hour days, six days a week. Thus, the shift in how our economy operated began, flipping from agricultural to industrial, and along with that was the changing views on work. Beneath the clamor of machinery, a murmur of dissent grew. As the industrial complex overtook the economy, workers were pushed quickly to the brink of what they could handle. Between safety concerns, poor labor conditions, and underwhelming pay, things needed to change or the entire system risked being unsustainable. Weary and worn, workers began to rise up, demanding reasonable hours and a day of rest, and thus, the seed of change was sown. We often find ourselves with a low tolerance for true pain, complaining about being stressed from work, but the simple fact that these workers of the past had endured what would have appeared to be a lifetime of hard labor with no end in sight speaks volumes to the perseverance, dedication, and strength of our not-so-distant ancestors. And if you've endured this video so far, and perhaps actually enjoy it, show us some love for our hard work by hitting the like and subscribe button. These days, we're all working for the algorithm, 24-7. In 1926, however, a momentous shift occurred. The Ford Motor Company under Henry Ford implemented a five-day, 40-hour work week. What must be disclaimed, though, is this move wasn't purely out of benevolence, but from an astute understanding that a well-rested worker was a productive worker, and even more importantly, a consuming worker. This is someone who not only contributes to production, but also to the greater economy, thus helping the business grow on a macro level as well. It's one of the reasons Ford doubled salaries for its workers in 1914 as a way of giving employees more money to spend consuming goods and services as part of the economy. In order to spend the money though, they needed the leisure time to do so. Alas, the weekend was born. Workers now had time for leisure, family, and a crucial point for burgeoning industries, consumption. The revolutionary idea rippled across industries and borders, gradually establishing itself as the global standard. This is a major reason why we've seen the global economy scale at such an exponential rate over the last century. But let's vault into the present. The eight hour, five day work grind has been the norm and it still has remained so. Yet here we are in an era of boundless connectivity and technological marvels that promised to liberate us from the confines of the nine to five, but have they? Things that have made us more efficient have not been met with a reduction in how much one needs to do. They simply have increased the output that we are capable of in the same amount of time. The digital age, teetering between liberation and endless work, has muddied the clear boundaries that once defined our work and personal lives. A pandemic-induced shift to remote work further blurred these lines and gave the entire work life an end-to-end -end shakeup. All this prompts us to truly reevaluate is the five-day work week still as relevant in a world where work is always just one click away? Across the world, voices rise again, echoing the sentiments of workers from centuries ago, calling for a re-examination of our work structures. Concepts like the four-day work week are no longer radical fantasies, but are being piloted in countries and by companies alike. Sabbaticals, already a popular concept in Europe and Australia, are being evaluated for pros and cons. Most noticeably, flexible hours are catching on, where one works their eight hours in the cadence that is most productive for them. The risk with any of these concepts herein lies with the abuse of the system. Just because one could be as productive in four days as they are in five days, 
doesn't mean they will be. There's a very real possibility that Thursday just becomes the new Friday, and the same amount of work gets done on a daily basis anyway, just with one less day. Others have suggested a pay cut of 20% in order to have one less day of work, but inverted, this is the same thing as just giving a 20% raise. Of course, it's only a matter of time before a higher salary becomes desensitized to, and the desire to simply work less surfaces yet again. If there's one thing that is for sure, it is that the culture of the company, which can also be impacted by the culture of the demographic in which it operates, must be considered during analysis of what the future of work looks like. As we've learned in our society, there's not a one-size-fits-all approach that can make everyone happy. Some people would rather work less and earn less, while others are happy to work more as long as they're paid more. A capitalist growth mindset like which exists in corporate America is different from a less aggressive mindset like that which exists in corporate Europe. Regardless, companies all across the world have their work cut out for them in figuring out how to navigate the challenges of the modern work life balance. And we haven't even touched on how remote work plays into that. But if that's something you'd like to hear us weigh in on, or if you have another topic you'd like to see covered, drop it in the comments below. Also, let us know what you think about the four day work week. Think it's legit? Let us know. And as always, we appreciate you watching.